It's Adam here for PC Monitors and today I'm going to be taking a look at the OSD on-screen display menu system of the ViewSonic XG2530. The OSD is controlled by pressable buttons on the underside of the bottom bezel in the central region. There are button labels here. They look slightly illuminated um, in press shots and also probably in my video here but they're actually just sort of orange painted uh, labels. They're not illuminated and you can't see them in a dark room. The pressable buttons, not touch sensitive. There is a blue power LED and that glows amber when the monitor is in a low power state, so it's on standby. Um, and it disappears when you turn the monitor off, um, which is technically still standby, but when you turn it uh, off using the power button. The first button there has a little G on it, and that is the game mode presets, which you can select. There are various options there. I'm not going to spend too much time going through these. I don't actually like most of them, um, except for the last three, which are actually customizable. Um, there's actually, sorry, there's a volume, that's not a preset. There's, a, there's also just a sort of quick way of adjusting the volume of the integrated speakers or anything connected to the 3.5 millimeter jack at the bottom there as well. But uh, where it says test LBL custom three, um, by default, these are actually Custom 1, Custom 2 and Custom 3 and these are fully customizable game presets. I find that the sort of default presets, they're too restrictive and they sort of mess the colours up in various different ways. So I don't really recommend using them but these custom ones, they give you a lot of customization, as I'll come on to shortly and you can even rename your custom presets as I've done there. So I've got test for my test settings, LBL for a sort of custom low blue light uh, mode that I've created. Um, which is actually identical to my test settings other than the fact that the low blue light filter is on as well. So I like to use that for relaxing viewing in the evening um, when you're supposed to cut out blue light as much as possible to avoid disrupting sleep as well. Next up, uh, the next button along is an up arrow and that allows you to access the main menu. Down arrow does the same. There's also A and B and again these are all just uh, if you press them without pressing anything else, I'll just go on to the main menu. So I'll run through the main menu system. First up is gaming settings. This allows you to customize the gaming presets, which you could activate with the little G icon, the first button on the monitor, without actually entering the main menu system. So, for example, the, the test, as I said, is a custom preset, um, an LBL custom 3. They're all custom presets. Um, and these ones will allow you to activate and uh, change various settings. So there's Rampage Response, which is the name that ViewSonic gives to their Pixel Overdrive feature. And you can set this to various different options, which are discussed in the review. Monitor Hertz Cap. That is greyed out simply because I'm, I have uh, AMD FreeSync active. But um, it's basically a quick way of adjusting the refresh rate of the monitor if you don't have FreeSync active. So I'll just um, quickly deactivate FreeSync, which you can see there's, a, there's an option for, there, uh, for that there. So I should now be able to access the um, monitor hertz cap feature, yes. So you can see you can select various different refresh rates, native, 240Hz, so 60Hz, 100Hz, 144Hz or 180Hz. I'm not going to play around with that right now, but I have tested it already and it does work as intended. Black stabilisation feature. Um, the neutral position for this is 11, but some presets have it set to 8 or something else. And actually, if you change this a little bit from 11, it doesn't really have a huge effect on the image, so don't worry too much about that but you can set this to more extreme values. It actually goes all the way up to 22, all the way down to zero. This is very similar to BenQ's Black Equalizer. It alters the gamma curve of the monitor, and the, the, the idea of it is to, as you increase this, it makes dark areas more visible. Um, so if you're playing a game, it can make um, enemies more visible, for example, in dark areas. So you can see if I increase that, the uh, shades become more visible, dark shades, and if you decrease that they become less visible. So that's really all that does. 
So if you want a competitive edge, you might want to increase that a little bit. Advanced DCR, dynamic contrast ratio. You can set this between 0 and 20. Um, I go through this in the review. Don't like the setting at all, so I'm not gonna waste time talking about it now. Brightness, so you can adjust the backlight brightness of the monitor as usual. Color adjust, there's contrast um, adjustment here. Um, that's color saturation. You can actually make it entirely monochrome if you put that all the way up to zero, which is, uh, sorry, down to zero, which is kind of cool, but uh, pointless for most users. And if you increase that beyond 50, um, it actually pulls shades closer towards the edge of the gamut. So it's a bit like NVIDIA's digital vibrance control. So you actually lose shade variety because the color gamut itself doesn't change. Um, but basically lots of shades become more saturated and they get crushed together at the higher end of saturation. So you lose some shade variety, but it does give you a more saturated look, which some users do prefer. There's also a gamma setting. So some people will rejoice because some of these gaming monitors don't give you this flexibility and it's quite frustrating, but you can set the gamma between 1.8 and 2.8 on these settings. And I mean, they don't correspond exactly. Uh, I explore these in the review. It's nice to have the flexibility to change them though in the monitor's OSD. The blue light filter setting, again, explored in the review. And this, as you increase this, it decreases the color temperature of the monitor, it decreases the intensity of the blue color channel, makes everything look warmer, decreases blue light output. Um, so it can give you more relaxing viewing, particularly important in the evening, as I mentioned before, or just before bed. Um, view scale, so various different scaling options on the monitor. One to one, um, I mean, I'm, I'm running the native resolution at the moment and I don't intend to make this video too long because it's, there's, I mean, there's lots of stuff to get through on this. So I'm not gonna go through all of these, but basically uh, one to one pixel mapping feature. So if you're running a non-native resolution and you want everything to be displayed one to one without any distortion um, or loss of sharpness, that's what you want to choose. Um, full, it'll stretch it and use the interpolation feature of the monitor to display with all of the pixels of the monitor. Aspect ratio um, will scale but maintain the aspect ratio. Um, and there are various other sort of options which simulate different screen sizes and aspect ratios that are smaller than this particular screen as well. Rename, and that just allows you to rename the pre preset, the custom preset. So I've got test there, and um, obviously renamed that from custom one. You can reset all of these to the factory defaults, and I don't want to accidentally do that because I spent a while setting up my custom one and custom two there. So there's also um, game mode select, which allows you to select one of the um, preset uh, game modes. And as you'll see, if you select some of these, um, so example, I've got, for example, I have the color X mode enabled now. You can't actually manually configure a lot of stuff now. So it's all done for you, which I don't like. And most users with a keen eye will not like either. Next, there's display. And that has various options under color temperature, so you can change the color temperature of the monitor. These are explored, or the more useful um, ones here are explored in the review. Full color control allows you to manually configure the red, green and blue color channels. Color adjust has various other settings that you can play with. Color space, which should um, if in doubt, just leave that on auto, but really RGB is the standard for PC use and uh, sort of games consoles now as well. Um, but for compatibility purposes, you can select uh, YUV here as well. Again, leave this on auto if you don't know what you're doing here, but uh, you can, for compatibility purposes, you can select limited range rather than full range if you have to. Gamma settings, i um, already gone through them. So this is another place where you can adjust the gamma again. So a few settings are repeated here. Next, there is image adjust. And again, I've already gone through these features except for sharpness and overscan, which are greyed out. Um, they, I think they're actually just a hangover from some other ViewSonic monitors because um, they're only supposed to apply to analog connections or VGA, which this monitor doesn't actually include anyway. So it's a bit of an odd one. Um, to include there. 
input select, so you can select um, HDMI 1, uh, the first HDMI port, which is HDMI 2.0, HDMI 2, which is a 1.4 port, and display port, um, which is display port 1.2a. View mode. So these are some other presets, not really specific for gaming, but some other presets that you can select on the monitor. Um, and again, they don't give you the same flexibility as the custom presets that I prefer to use. So, for example, standard, which is the factory default, you can't then change um, all of these settings because they're connected to the uh, gaming settings, your custom gaming settings instead. But there are various other presets you can use if you want to. Audio adjust allows you to change the volume of the integrated 3.5mm headphone jack or integrated speakers of the monitor or mute them. And then the setup menu which has various other options. You can change the language that the OSD is displayed in. There's an information section um, which displays various information about the monitor. One of the more useful aspects of this is actually V frequency, the vertical frequency, because if you have AMD FreeSync active that's actually the only indication you'll have that it is active from the monitor itself. Obviously you should be able to feel it's active and see it's active blah 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 but the monitor doesn't have like a, a light that changes colour or give any sort of obvious indication anywhere else that it's active but the vertical frequency will change as the uh, refresh rate changes if uh, FreeSync is active. Resolution notice, so that just pops up a notice on the screen to tell you that you're not using the native resolution of the screen if you're not using it. OSD pivot, which, so that's if you've got the monitor in portrait orientation and you want the uh, menu to actually be usable in that orientation. OSD timeout, how long after the last button pressed before the monitor uh, OSD automatically disappears. So for the purposes of this video, I had that set to 60, so it doesn't just disappear when I don't want it to. Um, OSD background, so we can turn on or off the sort of transparency effect, or um, have the background being pure grey on or off, I should say. Power indicator, which I showed you before. If, if that's annoying you for whatever reason, you can actually just turn that off automatic power off. So if the monitor's been left uh, unused um, in a low power state for a while and it's got the amber light flashing or whatever, it'll automatically turn uh, off or turn itself on to standby um, into a low, lower power state. There's a sleep function which will do that uh, automatically put it in a low power state after a given amount of time, specified amount of time between 30 minutes and 120 minutes. There's eco mode and all that will do is slightly lower the brightness of the uh, monitor so an optimize it will just slightly lower it from what you had it set to before. Conserve it will give you an even lower brightness setting. There is DDC slash CI which is part of the plug and play functionality of the monitor that allows you to use software to control the OSD of the monitor. Spare port Display port 1.1, that is a compatibility feature which is useful if you're using an older graphics card with only display port 1.1 capabilities. If you're connecting using display port and you want the full capabilities of the monitor, you have to be using 1.2, so just leave this set off. Now that's a little bit confusing because some monitors have display port 1.2 as an option which you'd have to turn on, so that's the opposite of that. Memory recall will set everything to the factory defaults. And I mean, the final thing, there's just a couple of uh, little things at the bottom of the menu here. There's a little power indicator bar, which gives you a reflection of how much power, the, the relative power consumption of the monitor. So really the brightness is the main thing that uh, will change that. And there's also a, an indication of the refresh rate that's currently being used by the monitor. That doesn't change when FreeSync is active though, so do note that that's always just displaying the static refresh rate that you've got selected in Windows. So really that's all there is to it. The OSD on-screen display menu system of the ViewSonic XG2503. Be sure to check out the full review on PCMonitors.info. There's a link to that 
um, the, to the written review in the description of the video and also a link to information about how you can support the work that we do.